Well, here it is from Telescope Service in Germany. The filter has arrived. It took about a week or so. They're pretty fast, those guys. I can tell you that. Dealt with them in the past and been very satisfied. So here's the box that it comes in. Let's get this out. And this is it here. It's pretty thick, as you can see, uh, six millimeters. And it's got a dielectric coating on it. There's also a pencil mark on the side to tell you which way faces the right there. I don't know if you could see it, but there's a little pencil mark and that goes towards the sky. And let's see if we did our homework right. This should drop right in. Yes, it does. And if you notice, it's a little loose and you want it loose because you don't want it super tight in case it does happen to expand and then that goes over there and that's it and there it is so this is schedule 40 pvc uh, one of my favorite materials for making different aspects of astrophotography, mounts, things like that. And this is a cap that would go over a four inch pipe. And the pipe would fit right in there and this would normally cap it out. Now I've got a hole saw here. It's about a three inch hole saw and it cuts about an 80 centimeter hole. And there it is right there. So we remove that portion here, simply put it on your drill press. Hopefully you have one. If you don't, you can do this by hand, but it can get a little squirrely, you know, moving around. So you might want to figure out a way to clamp this down. But this is what we're going to use to put over the scope. Now this four inch will fit a 90 Moxitove a Skymax, and it's approximately about four and a half inches in diameter. Or if you uh, want to go metric, so it's about 115 millimeters in diameter. So it will accommodate the outside of the scope that's 115 millimeters. This doesn't weigh that much, but it's certainly plenty strong enough. And it's a cheaper way than buying the filter holders that are available from a batter which are really expensive it's you know two three hundred bucks and the filter uh, is about 450 delivered to the states so this is a nice economical way this material is readily available at builder supply stores and um, this was i think about 15 bucks for this or under Already drilled it out, as you can see, so we're going to move on to the next uh, phase of it, which would be to make the spacer that's going to allow the filter to stay centered and not flop around in there. So I've taken this compass and uh, spread it out to where I'm going to get about a four and three eighths circle or a shade over. This is a piece of fiberglass beaded board. They use these in, oh, restaurants and restrooms, walls and stuff like that. So now that I've got the outside diameter cut, which is going to fit in here, I'll drill out a 80 millimeter hole out of the center. And when that's done, then I'll cut this out here. This is to give this flat space for that filter to sit in because as you can if you look this is beveled and it's not going to accommodate that filter too well it can move around so we want a nice flat space and this will give it the flat space and then on once the filter goes in on top of that we'll cut another one of these that'll go on top of the filter there's our center spot by the way guys not for nothing but i'm wearing a mask a dust mask because this stuff and the pvc uh, micro particles probably not the best thing to be breathing in but hey it's your call right you could use mdf or something like that okay so now 
Let's move on to the next step. So now that we've got our hole cut, uh, you probably can't see it, but there's a fine scratch line that it's left over from marked by the compass. So I'm going to take a saber saw. Some call this a jigsaw with a metal cutting blade and just going to run into this and cut that off. And that's it. Probably going to have to doll it up. I can see it's not perfectly round. And yeah, just needs to be sanded up a little bit so it drops down in there. But that's, uh, that's looking pretty good. sit all the way down now yep that's it there what we're looking for is we want to see right here we want to see that ridge to make sure that this is sitting flat that bevel is pretty severe so that's it right there so then the filter this is approximately 90 millimeters will sit right in there like that So now what we need is a spacer that's going to go in between here to keep this from moving around, okay, and keep it centered on that 80 millimeter hole. So what I've got here is furniture grade quarter inch birch plywood. And this has one, two, three, four, five plies in this little piece of wood here. So it seems relatively stable and stiff. You can use MDF, which is medium density fiberboard, which is better than particle board. But I'm going to use this, and this measures out six millimeters, exactly the same thickness as our batter filter. Essentially, I'm going to cut the same thing that I did in the beginning with this fiberglass, except it'll have to be 90 millimeters instead of 80 millimeters, because that filter has to drop down inside that, and this will keep it from moving around. But the outside diameter is going to be the same as this ring. And we're probably going to have to do two of these. This one will keep the filter centered and not sloshing around in here. And then we'll cut another one but it will be 80 millimeters, so we'll use our hole saw to cut the second one with a smaller hole that will go on top of the filter to keep it in place. So I've cut the hole in the 90 millimeter spacer, which is this one here, and with this is 90 millimeters, so it fits right in there, okay? Fits right in there easily. You want some wiggle around room in there, you don't want that super tight. Better to be three millimeters too big or four millimeters, because like I say, you have enough with the 80. There's gonna be enough if it shifts around, it's still gonna cover this 80 millimeter hole. Don't wanna bind that filter up inside this spacer. Just keep that in mind. So now I'm gonna sand it out, and that'll give me even a little more room. Okay, so they're sanded up. So now we have to cut the outside diameters and sand them up and see where we're at. Well, I've got the different spacers cut out. And then what I'm gonna do is clean this up because that creates a burr. So you can just take a utility knife and go on an angle and scrape off the burr. And do the same thing on the inside. So it'll be like that. It's the same thing, you just go around like that and scrape the burr out. And then I went ahead and Sanded this in here, cleaned it up, and it's looking pretty good. This is the fiberglass, and this faces the sun, and what I'm going to do is, is put some aluminum tape over that, so that when it's, you know, the sun can maybe get in on an angle there, and that'll protect that 
This here is the 90 millimeter spacer, the wider one, and that drops in there. It's kind of snug, which is good because it kind of stays in place, doesn't want to drop out. And then this is to, to cap it. So we've made a little progress here, and I've got these thumb screws. And you guys know what this is going to be for. I drilled out three holes equally spaced on the side of this, and then these will go in here. The way I've got these spaced is so that when you push the OTA all the way and it bottoms out to this piece here, it'll be in one inch. Yeah, I ran a piece of uh, red electrical tape here to doll it up. Now, one thing I'd like to point out that's an advantage to this design is that the energy rejection filter is recessed, so it's back up in here. That means that when you lay this down like that, you're not laying it on top of the filter, which is really cool. And of course, if you lay it like this, it's way far away from the surface. So I noticed here on the edge, I've got a little shiny spot right there. It's right here on the edge, and I'm thinking I might get a little reflection coming off there uh, from the sun or bouncing off the glass filter. So I'm going to take this Sharpie black pen and blacken that out in case that becomes an issue. Because you can get internal reflections you know, looking right at the sun. So you want to keep that in mind. So that's that fiberglass beaded board that I have in there. And then so I took the same Sharpie and then blackened the front side of this and the edges as well. If you recall, this is just quarter inch birch plywood, furniture grade. So it has about five veneers in that one quarter inch. What I see here is this edge right here. I think I'm going to blacken that as well. It's going to be easier to do it now than later because once we hot glue that in there, if, there, if it is a problem, then it's going to be harder to deal with. So we'll just take this Sharpie and blacken that as well. And you're going to want to let that dry pretty good before you put the glass back in so that none of the residue gets on the rim of the glass. The other nice thing I like about it, it has a nice lip to where it goes over the OTA 50 millimeters or two inches uh, rather than some of them they just hang right on the edge and they could just you know flip off. Now we can drop this in there again noting where the arrow they put a pencil mark to show you which faces the sky so this filter should go like this see it sits in there like that and there's a little gap around it and then this again now that it's blackened will go on top of that and, and there you go all right I believe this Hot glue gun is probably ready to go. Be sure you don't drop any on that glass, <laughs> you know. So when you're coming out of there, you want to kind of keep the tip along the side here and come up like that. Come out like that. Don't come across because you might boop, drop something on there. That fits in there and it looks pretty good. A little loose there so she has room to expand and you know we'll stick it out to the sun and I want to mention that this batter energy rejection filter is made to use in conjunction with a quirk so you're not going to be putting this on your telescope and looking at the sun uh, with an eyepiece you will go blind you will go blind. What this is for is to reduce the energy coming into a closed system or a larger aperture telescope, but particularly for moxitoves where they're closed systems so that they don't overheat inside the tube. 
I uh, just want to make sure we get that out. This sun stuff is could be really dangerous, and you you want to make sure you're using the proper equipment. All right, so I've got the mock set up here with the quirk right here, bino views, battery, and a Skywatcher AZ GTE. Here's the filter here we've got, and we'll take this cap off. Now I've put some bubble aluminum wrap to insulate the interior so that the uh, tube currents are not as severe, so there's a transition between outside and inside is more gradual. So the way this worked out, I, don't, I didn't need the quarter inch thumb screws to attach it to the OTA because it's a nice pressure fit. See that? Goes all the way in, and there it is. I mean, that's it doesn't get much better than that. Okay, so there it is there. From looking at it from the front, we'll post an image here that I'll have after I do some visual. I'm going to use a ASI 174 and show you what kind of uh, resolution we can get out of this. I'm pretty pleased with the way this worked out. It wasn't all that difficult. You get a really nice quality filter holder here and like I said before it's recessed back in there which gives it some protection well I hope you found this information useful uh, we're always trying to provide the best tips and ideas to make the hobby a little more enjoyable and save you a couple of bucks at the, at the same time um, if you haven't done so already you know subscribe uh, leave a comment if you have some additional ideas uh, share it with the community till next time Clear skies and thanks for tuning in to Dakota Starry Night.